The Institute for Geoscience Research, or TIGER for short, is a multidisciplinary grouping within Curtin University here in Western Australia. It's bringing together the top researchers in geology, in geochemistry and geophysics with one main aim, and that is to understand the evolution of the Earth from its very beginnings to the present day. We bring together into the general geological background uh, geodesy, uh, looking at the modern Earth in terms of uh, using GPS, etc., for very precise location. And we also include organic geochemistry, which is very unusual, but very critical because organic geochemistry can tell us an awful lot about extinction events which have taken place on Earth over time. What we're mostly involved in is um, modelling the gravity field of the Earth and terrestrial planets. So we, for instance, have computed the highest resolution gravity model of Earth highest of the Moon and the highest of Mars. Here we see a, a picture of the high resolution gravity field uh, over the five continents. You can see very detailed information in it. And we've taken these same computational techniques and applied them to the Moon. It gives us an understanding of the evolution of the, the early solar system. Now we've identified these craters, other scientists can look at the craters and try and find out more as to, as to what happened in the early history. I'm an organic geochemist um, and a stabilised top geochemist, so I look at molecular fossils in the rock record, which are associated with ma some of the biggest mass extinction events of, li of life on our planet. With regards to sedimentary basins, we work on petroleum and mineral systems from Australian basins. Examples include one here in Perth actually, the Perth Basin, and that is associated with the mass, biggest mass extinction event in history, which was about 252 million years ago. We also work on the Devonian Canning Basin in the Kimberleys, which is associated with formation of oil and there's also mineral deposits in that region. The highlights of my research are actually showing that um, there's a lot of similarities between three of the biggest extinction events on our planet. The processes and the chemistry in the oceans are very similar. This is a global warming event, so there's very high amounts of CO2, there's no ice poles in those events, and they're associated with the formation of deposits which give rise to resources. Uh, well, here at the Tiger Institute, I'm looking at the evolution of vertebrate sex. It involves having a look at some of Australia's best preserved fossils um, from the Gogo Formation, and we're having they're so beautifully preserved that the soft tissues and the soft structures are all there and we've been able to find little embryos with the umbilical cord still attached and the male clasping organs. The thing I find most exciting is actually seeing where we've come from and how our own vertebrate body starts to get put together. The other thing is that when you think of fossils, you usually think of only the bone being preserved, yet we've got soft tissues, so we're getting a much better idea of how early life, especially vertebrate life, evolved because of this incredible preservation. My work focuses on three areas. One is the supercontinent cycles, the other one is the geodynamic, and the third area is the tectonic evolution of Asian Pacific region. To reconstruct the assembly and the breakup of supercontinents, we needed to use all the information and all the tools we can get hold of. One of the key tools is paleomagnetism which analyzes the trees, trees minute magnetic particles trapped in rocks, which keep a record of how did the continent move. The cyclic nature of supercontinent evolution raises the question of what drives it. And uh, at the moment, we are working on a hypothesis that the supercontinent cycles are actually coupled with superplume events in the deep mantle. This, for the first time, allows us to link what we see on the Earth's surface to what's happening in Earth's deep mental or even in the core. So we are in the brink of a new revolution to allow us to understand the, the entire Earth system. In another word, how Earth works. The key thing that I find uh, working with my colleagues here in Tiger and of course internationally, we have a very strong international linkage here, is the fact that we are able uh, by visiting other laboratories and people coming here to visit us, uh, we are able to get 
all the information currently available, I think, on the material that we have. The technology is always advancing, so we will always get the opportunity to understand a little bit more about these early crystals, but uh, we are at the forefront in terms of the, how this is being developed. One of our aims is to understand the complete Earth history from its early beginnings to the present day and all intervening stages. It's extremely exciting stuff. Uh, we're sitting on this planet at the moment and uh, we have some idea of how we got there, but we don't really know the beginnings of life. We don't know how much was involved from meteorites. These are the key things that we would like to examine in future.